the other way. Okay. So the goal here is uh, try to check keep our proof object into the ducty. And yeah, to remind you, so the K framework is a semantical framework to define formal semantics of programming languages to automatically generate uh, tools from these semantics. And um, uh, as an example, so of course there is a parser, an interpreter, but also an automatic CRM prover named the K-Prover. And um, for deducty, it's a logical framework to encode various logics and, and allow interoperability of proof between different formal tools. So I say yesterday, and both of these tools are based on matching logic. So for, for, for on logic, sorry, and for the K, it's uh, the matching logic, of course. Uh, it's an untyped first order logic with fixed points on the next operator. And uh, for um, deductees, the lambda pi calculus modulo theory. So it's a lambda calculus with dependent depths and extended with rewritables. And here, the goal is, okay, translate keep over proof object into deductee, but first of all, I will uh, explain a bit more how you can define the semantics in K to mm, understand properties that you can express with the K framework. So K uh, is useful to define semantics. So the first step is define the syntax. Uh, and you do that with a DNF grammar. And after all, you need to define semantics on uh, this syntax. And you use f uh, configuration for that, so it's just the state of the, the program. So here, there is a, um, an example with two sales. The first one is named K, and it's contained in fact the current program. And the second sales is named F, or environment, and it's just say that the variable x has the value 25. And thanks to rewrite rule on the configuration, you can in fact define a transition system. So I already showed you this slide yesterday, and I think it's uh, useful to see uh, a bit more what is k. So here it's uh, just some nodes, and each node contains a configuration, or one configuration, and thanks to rewrite rules, you define uh, a path between all these nodes. So uh, at the beginning, if you would like to uh, execute first affectation, in fact, you just uh, modify the environment. Then you unroll uh, one times the loop while, thanks to if then else uh, constructor. Um, then you can uh, evaluate uh, the conditions of the if then else, of course. And then you execute uh, so statements according to the conditional. And here you, uh, in fact, update the environment. And you can do uh, this process any time to reach uh, to the final state that the program is terminated. And here you can see the result is zero. And of course, there is uh, other nodes that can reach this uh, configuration as this one with uh, another value. OK. And in fact, the key prover is parameterized by your uh, semantics. So it's possible to translate this semantics into a logic that the key prover can understand, so it's a matching logic. And you can, I, I mean, it's natural to define only a reachability property uh, because you have uh, transitional systems. And here the semantics is during the execution of a program, if psi is match, then psi prime will be matched later on in a finite number of steps or there is a divergence. And to be clear, it's possible to do a symbolic execution thanks to this k prover. So as this example, so you have, uh, in fact, here two abstract variables, n and s. And you can uh, initialize the concrete variable of the program with these two variable abstract. And uh, if you write this program, you can express that at the end, when the, the program terminates, you in fact obtain this result. So it's uh, just mathematical, so classical uh, formula. Okay, but here, uh, in fact, the first paper that present uh, the k prover with uh, which can tr uh, generate trace don't uh, do anything with symbolic execution. It just try to do this with a concrete one. And yeah, 
for now, I just uh, try to do this uh, uh, with concrete execution. Okay. Um, in fact, there is two ways, so two solutions to solve the problem. Uh, I mean, to check uh, capable proof objects, uh, because in fact the, the K team already formalized matching logic and so on into a tool. Maybe you don't know this tool. It's MetaMath. I will present you uh, this tool uh, in a few slides. Um, no, so it's uh, one of the way to, to check, uh, in fact, yes, capable proof objects. And the other solution, of course, is directly encode matching logic, semantics, and so on, directly into deductive. So I will present you the direct approach and the approach via MetaMath. Okay. So first, with uh, the direct approach, so, in fact, um, as I said, so deductive is a logical framework. So, deductive, in fact, is a language, and this language is based on the lambda pi calculus modulo uh, theory. But you can see uh, core, so a special uh, theory of uh, matching logic, as in fact a language to manage, in fact, matching logic. So it's very close. You have, in fact, two uh, logical frameworks. And K is just uh, high level languages. So, thanks to um, K works, you can in fact translate, uh, K team works, you can translate in fact K into this uh, logic. Okay. And uh, in so, to uh, achieve this goal or prove uh, this, um, this, this uh, property, uh, there is <laughs> many things to do. So, the first one is encode matching logic into deductive. Okay, and to do that, of course, you need to encode uh, the pattern, so the formula, if you prefer, or term. It's the same thing in, in this logic. So you need to encode this pattern into a <laughs> deductive. Then you need also to uh, encode proof systems, but I don't will explain this uh, in detail. See uh, my talk on uh, deductive school tomorrow about that. <laughs> and yeah. But it's a classical way to, on the, I mean, the first step, it's very classical. The second one, in fact, is, as I say, you can translate the key semantics into core. So it's very close to uh, the concrete matching logic. But you can also do the same thing for the claim and for the trace. So, and it's not my job. It's al already done. Me, I just need, uh, by mean, uh, just, it's not so easy, but uh, to encode core into deductive. And the key idea here is, um, in fact, you need to see a core as a <coughs> uh, language translatable into pattern of matching logic. So it's not really defined in paper, so I need to exchange with uh, the K team to understand uh, exactly what I mean by what is this uh, piece of syntax that generates in core file exactly. So <laughs> it's not so difficult to understand on Sometimes they don't have the, the answer, so okay. But I need to do that, and the, um, I mean it's very close to the, math, the logic. So the idea is use rewriting to, in fact, go directly into, from a core into machine logic uh, because it's in fact just a high level language uh, behind uh, machine logic, and uh, then. When I have this encoding, normally it's not so difficult to translate uh, syntax, claim, and trace into uh, my encoding. And then, it's thanks to rewriting, it's directly uh, go on a matching logic. Okay. And maybe the more technical part is, in fact, generate the proof from the k proof trace. And I will explain uh, a bit, but not so long. Uh, so, this is an example of a proof. Uh, so, <laughs> don't worry, I don't, I, yeah. There is a lot of detail, but it's, it's not so difficult, in fact. So, here, um, this is an execution, a concrete execution, a bit abstract because it's just uh, phi uh, one, three, and so on. But the key idea is, in fact, there is three steps uh, for phi one to achieve phi four. So in fact, uh, the k-prover trace here give me um, each 
tape, so each walls with a substitution, so I can easily obtain this judgment, this one and this one. So this is the application in machine logic. This is uh, the next operator, so it just speak about the next uh, state, the transition system. So in fact, this is a, a rewriting rules in the encoding of uh, machine logic. And to generate the proof, in fact, um, it's a recursive uh, algorithm. So you need to do use uh, t the transitivity rule here to, in fact, um, uh, to appear this adjustment, so this adjustment here is used here, this one in this, and the last one here. And you can use, so f f here f is a framing, so it's a native role in machine logic, so it's not so difficult, it's just one step in the proof systems to uh, achieve this uh, judgment. Okay, and uh, for the to conclude the proof here, yeah, it seems to be very, very long. It's a bit long, yes, but it's redundant. I mean, you use it here, transitivity or framing, transitivity or framing, and so on. So you can, in fact, uh, define in deducti uh, a dependent symbol to generate this automatically uh, according to this adjustment. So it's not so difficult, in fact. It's a bit technical because there is a lot of language and a lot of small translation, but uh, yeah, it's a bit um, technical, but not so much. Okay, so as you say, so well, I say, it's um, a bit technical. That's the reason we are interesting to try also the, an approach via MISAMAS, and I will present this uh, this part. And first of all, I would like to do a, <laughs> a tribute to, uh, in fact, the creator of Metamats. Uh, yes, because, uh, in fact, I never uh, exchanged with these people because uh, I read, I uh, wrote uh, an email exactly on this date. So <laughs> that's uh, not so bad. But it's so bad. And to do that, I would like to um, just uh, listen to you. Um, a piece of music, <laughs> uh, because it's possible with metamats to, <laughs> what's happened, I don't know, yes, to uh, generate music according to a proof. So, for instance, yeah, uh, the Russell paradox in music. Note to in a few seconds. Okay, so it's just uh, strange, maybe. Maybe it's not a good idea to listen it uh, just sleep or I don't know or to be <laughs> to stay concentrated uh, but yes it's um, very close to this talk that uh, has its types so it's just a, a fun fact okay and to yes remind you the goal so as uh, I said in the last part or and in the con in the introduction so we need to um, translate capable proof into the duty and in fact the Five first tape is already done by the K teams, but in Mesamas. So uh, here I need to um, to do uh, a small tape, in some sense, to uh, translate this encoding into deductive. Mm -hmm. So I need to translate the encoding of machine logic into deductive. The same for core, the same for the semantics, the claim, and of course the trace. And Generally, in fact, it just translates metamat encoding on metamat proofs. So, more generally, and in fact, we need a translator for met for from uh, metamat to deductive. Okay, and I will briefly explain uh, 
Metamask. Uh, so the key, key point here is you need to define constants, but everything is constants. I mean, uh, parentheses, so, and so on. So here you have um, constants zero, plus, equal, and so on. And here some types, in fact. You need also to define some variables, uh, T, S, P, U, and Q. Okay, uh, not so difficult. And you have some kind of um, hypothesis. So the first kind of hypothesis is the floating one here. And it just precise, in fact, the type of each variables. So these three variables as the type term and so on. Uh, okay. And next, we need to define, in fact, the types of the other consents. And you use, in fact, the same uh, way, but with a different keyword here, A, for axiom, of course. And then, so this is a, an example of formal number theory for of Mendelssohn. So there is, in fact, these two axioms, but it's just in the logic, so you don't care about that. Uh, I will show you a proof that how you can use uh, this axiom in uh, the next slide, in fact. And of course, we have the modus ponens. Okay. And the key, um, I mean, the funny part is the fact is how you can do uh, a proof into uh, with me mesamats. And in fact, you use here label. So maybe you see it. There is a label here, here. So you can point, point every uh, hypothesis. Okay, and here I would like to prove this uh, equality. And the fact is, we in fact, we have a, a stack. So this is the stack in movement. Okay, so for the first label, just I remind you, it's this hypothesis. And I put this hypothesis into the stack. Okay, I do exactly the, f the same thing for the second label. So this is a, the uh, new hypothesis, so I put it again into the stack. And for the next label here, in fact, they use it's used uh, some variables. So I need to um, find um, a substitution from these two hypotheses into the stack. And here it's not so difficult, and I obtain a new stack, this one. Okay. And I repeat this process for each label. So here I again um, put it this in the, for this hypothesis into the stack. This one merge all these uh, hypotheses and so on. I will skip a bit uh, because it's really the same thing. And here, uh, just to be clear, here it's a semantical. Uh, Axiom. So here it's really uh, an hypothesis. So it's very, very long to build uh, an hypothesis because you need to, in fact, check uh, the type during this process. Okay, so I will skip a bit because it's the same thing again and again and it's a bit long. And at the end, of course, you the goal is to use uh, modus ponens. So we have a long <laughs> stack, but in f uh, with two steps, you obtain, in fact, the result. Okay, and now, if you would like to have this proof in deductive, in fact, it's not so difficult. And the idea is, I use exactly the same Mithermatt's proof checker mechanism to build a lambda term. And this mechanism, it's, uh, it's this one. So here, I, in fact, don't put uh, the type of T <coughs> because it's not in fact, uh, I mean it's redundant. Okay, so same thing for here. I add zero. For in this case, I just obtain uh, the addition of these two uh, terms as here, and so on. So this is the same. This is part is not important. Okay. Okay, and here. So here I just in fact build the parameter for uh, a concrete. Uh, Axiomatization, or I mean a concrete proof step. And here, I would like to use these uh, axioms, so these ones. And it's supposed that, uh, for now, it's manually, uh, but we have uh, defined this axiom into deductive. And I don't put, in fact, this result into the stack, 
but these symbols with the parameters, so like this. So T comes from the TT label that is in fact in the stack, and I uh, in fact generate this uh, A21. Okay, great. And I do exactly the same thing, each type. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's exactly the same uh, term. And I, of course, need to uh, translate A12. Okay. Perfect. And for modus penance, same thing. And I obtain this long term, and at the end, in fact, this term. So it's a bit different than the previous part. Um, because, yeah, this is a lambda term, but in the previous fact, in fact, uh, Methamats, in fact, uh, checks syntactically if the goal on the last term into the stack is equal. But here yeah, it's, uh, of course, a bit different, so the result is uh, a bit different. Okay. Uh, so it's time to conclude, I think. So, um, so the direct approach is more robust because there is only one on coding. Uh, but there is many steps and work to do, but okay, <laughs> why not? I, I mean, it's important to um, formalize machine logic again. And uh, in the opposite, the, the approach with the mismatch, in fact, is less robust because I need to combine two encodings. But it's not so difficult uh, to yes, translate uh, mismatch encoding on proof. And I mean, it's very fun to translate, in fact, proof into metamats. And in fact, the first step is, uh, the first approach is a part of my thesis, and the second is a, a part of an internship that uh, supervises. And the, <laughs> the name of the intern is, uh, in fact, Elliot, of course. Yeah. And there is other open qu questions, because at the end, uh, I will uh, get an encoding <laughs> of uh, machine logic and so on into deducti. Elliot, another one. But at the beginning, it's exactly the same logic. So the question is, what is the gap between the encoding of uh, machine logic into uh, deducted directly on via Nisamats? The same for uh, the logic, the claim, and so on. So uh, it's in fact a new challenge, a new case of study for interoperability. But it's first of work, so for now, <laughs> yeah, I need time to <laughs> To finish, first of all, uh, the first part on the, the uh, translator from Metamats to, uh, to Deducti. So, thanks for your attention. About which encoding? The, the encoding of machine logic or of K semantics? I'm not sure to to understand at the beginning of your question. Yeah. Um, I mean, so the, the goal would be to not reason about one particular language. Uh, mm, not really. I, I mean, uh, yeah. To reason about the general class of, of languages. Right? Um, in fact, the translation here of the K semantics is general. So if you can translate a language thanks to K, yeah. normally you can translate uh, this K semantics into... Uh, but you still get, for each language that you encode in K, you still get some rewrite rules in the um, yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. So Beco I, I wonder, is there an encoding where you would have one general set of rewrite rules and then you just get... No, no. The, I mean, the tr yeah, the translation of the semantics depends on the semantics. So yeah, it's not the translation is not uh, say uh, do uh, for one times. Yeah, you need to do this. 
uh, each time, but uh, the encoding of machine logic is general, so you don't need to do it uh, for different semantics on the same for the, the core one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The programming, the esoteric programming language named Zelato. I don't know if you heard about it. It is for making uh, programs uh, with the music. And I wonder if it is somehow connected to this. Uh, to be honest, I don't know exactly the goal of this fun uh, translation. I'm not sure there is a formalization of it, but you have uh, a lot of examples. Uh, I mean, uh, tri triangle uh, inequality, uh, so trans transfinite uh, things and so on. So, but some of them takes f maybe 10 minutes. So <laughs> I think it's yeah so long for this talk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't have any detail for you about that. <laughs> but you can check on uh, misamat.org. Uh, you have a specific sh section about that. So with a, a lot of examples. Okay, great. Thank you. Any uh, if I can ask you a question. So usually automated theorem provers, like big provers, right, they strive to work on large scale, right, to, to have big proofs that they find. How scalable is the translation? So if I have a really big proof, that a proof trace that big prover gives me, uh, you mean in deductive or in the, in the, 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 the trace? I have, a, I have a very long k-prover trace. Yeah. Uh, will the translation be fast enough, or will I run out of memory, or what happens? Have you tried it? Not, not, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, this is work in progress, so yeah. there is uh, some piece of paper that doesn't work, uh, the, the piece of code, sorry, doesn't work for now, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yes, it's yeah. it's plain, and um, mm, yes, maybe it could be so long. I don't know, especially for a symbolic uh, uh, trace. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's thank you, Mary. And now we have a short break to change the technology, and then we go on. <laughs>